Hi, I'm Damien Masson, a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Toronto, and I will be presenting work I've done with my PhD advisors, Sylvain Malacria, Jay Cazier, and Daniel Vogel. Given a textual instruction in the form of a prompt, a large language model, LLM, can generate outputs such as emails, computer code, and vector images. Here, for example, I asked ChatGPT to generate a story involving Alice and a white rabbit. But if you've used ChatGPT before, you probably know that the result is rarely perfect from the first try. So we can try to refine that result by chatting with the model until obtaining something that really is satisfactory. But it's often a bit tedious and requires being very precise when referring to elements. And if there is a mistake, I have to find a way to cancel the change and go back to where I was. And these issues get even worse when trying to edit content like vector graphics. Here, I'm trying to edit a drawing representing a flower. And I'd like to use ChatGPT to color one of the petals using a gradient. So again, I'll have to be very precise in referring to the element I want to modify. And it's going to be a bit verbose because I need to clarify the position of that element. And I can try talking in terms of petals, but it's not even clear that ChatGPT will understand what I'm referring to. And even assuming all of this worked, if I ever want to color another pedal, I have to go through this whole process again. And so, in many ways, from an interesting interaction perspective, it's a step backward. And this is reminiscent of the issues we faced by when we were using command line interfaces. However, the difference is that for command line interfaces, we've known for a while how to avoid these issues. And here I'm talking about direct manipulation. Back in the 80s, Ben Schneiderman analyzed graphical user interfaces and their users. And he listed a set of principles that graphical user interfaces should follow to avoid the pitfalls of command line interfaces. And so these principles include a continuous representation of the object of interest, physical actions or label button presses instead of complex syntax, and rapid, incremental, reversible operations whose impact on the object of interest is immediately visible. And so drawing upon these guidelines, we developed DirectGPT, a prototype system that exemplifies how the principles of direct manipulation can help interact with large language models. In DirectGPT, the generated output is continuously represented in its final form of interest. And the output is manipulable to localize the effect of a prompt. So for example, after selecting a pedal, the prompt will modify only that pedal. And this idea also works for other types of content. For example, it is possible to edit a story to add more description to a specific part. And it's also possible to select uh, two words or multiple words and ask them to be replaced by synonyms. And of course, it's also possible to use the selection mechanism with code. But uh, DirectGPT also supports more complex commands that involve multiple objects. This can be done by dragging objects into the prompt to replace words. So here, for example, it is possible to drag elements from the canvas into the prompt to specify two coordinates to draw a line. And after prompts are entered, they become reusable tools in a toolbar of commands generated dynamically. Here, my previous prompt to draw a line created a tool to draw lines. Uh, once I select the tool, I can draw lines by clicking twice to specify coordinates. Another example but the, with text this time. Uh, here, I specify once how to replace a word with a synonym. And then the system uh, creates a tool that I can use to rapidly replace words by their synonyms. So how does, uh, how does it work? How does uh, ChatGPT works under the hood? Well, it works by uh, turning actions into uh, engineered prompts. So for a simple selection, the prompt asks the model to re rewrite that selection. And this works similarly for complex prompts. Uh, the system simply tags the selected content and then uses these tags to, when composing the prompt.
So now that we uh, developed a working prototype implementing direct manipulation principles, we wondered if these principles were actually beneficial. Specifically, we conducted an experiment with 12 participants to compare direct GPT with chat GPT and uh, measure the effect of direct manipulation principles to convey intent, control large language models, recover from mistakes, and reuse prompts. And so participants were asked to go through three activities with both interfaces, and those activities included uh, reproducing an image, editing literary text, and editing, editing JavaScript computer code. For each activity, participants completed four tasks that span different level of difficulties in using the direct manipulation features, uh, such as adding, removing, and transforming the content. For example, one task required removing some of the petals of the flower to reproduce the image on the left. With uh, direct GPT, this task could be done using direct manipulation to refer to the petals. With the other interface, the task had to be carried out using prompts in a conversation, like the official ChatGPT interface. At the end of each task, or after three minutes, the participant rated how close the generated output is to the target on a five-point scale from distant to close. In addition, we also collected how long it took the uh, participant to complete the task, the number of prompts used, and the length of those prompts. And at the end, we asked participants to complete a survey questionnaire and answer open-ended questions in a semi-structured interview. And so, in terms of subjective results, participants expressed a strong preference for direct GPT compared to chat GPT. For example, they all agreed that specifying the object to modify was easy with direct GPT, but not with chat GPT. Other results were also in favor of direct GPT, but some participants thought it was also easy uh, with chat GPT. So, for example, half the participants thought it was easy to specify the action to be done and to reuse prompt even with chat GPT. In terms of objective results, they were also in favor of direct GPT. For example, participants were more successful in accomplishing image and text editing tasks with direct GPT. However, they were as successful with both interface when it came to editing code. And they also had to enter fewer and shorter prompts using direct GPT. Whereas, whereas it took them longer and they needed more prompts with chat GPT. Of course, these results do not mean that direct GPT is always superior to chat GPT. No, uh, there are still contexts when chat GPT might be better, such as more exploratory tasks. But these results do show that for editing tasks, direct manipulation can really help and is better than just chatting. chatting. And these results were also reflected in participants' comments. Uh, particularly, participants mentioned that the features of direct GPT would have been helpful to them had they existed when they used ChatGPT to edit text or GitHub Copilot to edit code. In fact, the goal of DirectGPT was to evaluate direct manipulation features and inform how it could help uh, integrate large language models into graphical user interfaces. Currently, there is kind of a race to include uh, large language models into software. For example, Microsoft has been trying to include uh, uh, large language models into Microsoft Office. But most efforts seem to be uh, limited to placing ChatGPT on the side of the application and keeping this chat metaphor. With DirectGPT, we hope to inspire a more seamless integration of large language models. And so before I conclude, I want to mention some future work. So first, DirectGPT might have other advantages that could be interesting to evaluate. For example, it is known that direct manipulation helps uh, with learnability by enabling a multi-layered approach to learning. So future work could investigate if such learning occurs with DirectGPT. From our observations, we expect that localizing prompts and referring to objects would be quickly learned, but that reusing prompts would be more of an expert feature. Uh, similarly, several extensions to direct manipulation have been proposed, such as instrument of interaction and uh, demonstrational interfaces. And so we believe that these extensions could also help interact with large knowledge models. Uh, for example, demonstrating the operation would allow not only to specify nouns, but also verbs through physical actions. And users would provide examples of the action they want to perform, such as replacing a word by a synonym, and the system would derive a tool from it. And finally, while DirectGPT is built atop an LLM, 
Our findings point to the potential of dark manipulation to help interact with other kind of prompt-driven uh, generative models. For example, a music track could be directly manipulated using its audio spectrum. This would allow interactions such as prompting to reproduce this part here using a saxophone instead. All right, this was DirectGPT. If you're interested by it, the source code and a live demo of DirectGPT are available, as well as the data and analysis code used in the experiment. Thank you.